Hey guys, my name is Toby and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial where today we're going to be taking a look at how to retouch a very damaged area of an image uh, or a large area of an image very, very quickly using some cool filters. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've got this Lego figure. And as you can see, his chest area is kind of all scratched and scuffed up and it's not, you know, really looking very good. And we could sit here with the clone stamp and kind of take all these little bits of detail out. But, you know, there's not really particularly many clean areas to start from. And it could take quite a while and a lot of effort to actually get this to start to look pretty good. So one way of dealing with that is by using the dust and scratches filter. And you might be thinking, well, I don't really want to add dust and scratches to my images. Thank you very much. But that's actually not what this does. It actually is a way of selectively blurring and kind of cleaning up uh, fine detail while leaving the main majority of the shot intact. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our background layer. And we're going to do that by pressing Command J or Control J if you're on the PC. So we now just have a copy and we're going to go up to Filter noise, dust and scratches. And this is now going to show you uh, this lovely image, which is obviously not quite what we're going for. Uh, but what you've basically got here are two controls. You have the radius, which you can kind of think of, uh, it's like a blur amount value. So if you turn this down, it's going to blur less and less and less. Uh, and then you have this threshold slider, which is effectively saying, at what point do you want uh, the level of detail you're getting, gonna get rid of uh, to be cut off? So kind of the lower you have this, um, the more stuff will be included in being blurred. So you've got to bring this up to a point where the detail um, that you want to get rid of is still being blurred out. But you want to keep, you know, the major as this as high as you can get it um, while still getting rid of the thing you want to get rid of, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here on his chest. And as we can see, um, this is probably a little bit too high. So we probably want to go somewhere somewhere around maybe five or six, maybe four. Yeah, some, somewhere around four or five, I think maybe looks pretty good. Um, I think four is probably gonna be roughly where we wanna go. And then you can change the actual radius of how much you're blurring it. So as you can see, it's now starting to go quite smooth, but you wanna blur it enough that it's getting rid of all of that nasty detail that we had there before. And we're going to hit OK on that, I think. So as we zoom out, you can kind of see, well, it's not great because it's kind of ruined the rest of the image. And there's some nice details in there that we did want to keep that it has gotten rid of. And this is why we put it on a new layer, because what we can now do is we can hit the uh, layer mask button down here. It's going to give us a layer mask. And then what I think is the better way to do this is we could paint back in all the detail. But I think because there's actually less stuff to get rid of, if that makes sense. We're gonna actually invert our mask by pressing Command or Control I with the mask selected. That's gonna turn that black. So now this layer is effectively invisible. And then what we can do is we can take the paintbrush tool, which is letter uh, B on the keyboard, and then just with, um, with a reasonably hard brush, I guess like 80%, um, we can just start to come in here and just paint back in this layer. And this way we can leave in all of the kind of pertinent details that we want to keep, uh, but we can actually get rid of, you know, a huge amount um, of this kind of mess that we don't actually want to keep. Uh, and if you go, you know, a little bit too hard, like I can't, don't think we need to mess around with that highlight very much. If you just hit X, you can swap to your, uh, the black brush and you can paint back in uh you, know, you can just kind of paint in and out this layer using uh, basic masking techniques. And now we can actually kind of get rid of this uh, to a certain extent. And I will just point out, because this at the moment does look a lot like it's just kind of been blurred. But the problem is that if you blur it, this uh, sort of reflection from the lightsaber wouldn't be there. That would be completely gone because a blur would just smush everything together. This is selectively removed detail, which is why it's a little bit different and a little bit better. And you know, you can. It doesn't just have to be on uh, surfaces. I've used this um, to get rid of, like a, a scratched bar surface was quite good, um, and it was really useful for that. Um, I've also seen people use this as a way of retouching skin because if you've got somebody with the the right skin texture for the job, uh, this can be a really good way of 
getting rid of a lot of these imperfections that you kind of don't want uh, in one simple click. But, you know, it's kind of best used um, carefully with that, I think. It's very easy to kind of have an over-the-top Photoshop look uh, start to come out if you're going to use uh, the dust and scratches filter on a face. So that's looking pretty good. Now what we can actually do is we can actually just bring the opacity of this layer down just a smidge. Um, and that is going to start to bring in a few of these details, but you can see that from where we started to where we are now, that's a million times better. Uh, I haven't spent as much time on this as I could. There's a few little areas in here that maybe could be uh, tweaked a little bit more just to get those lines to come up nice and crisp, but you can spend as much time on this as you like. Uh, but you know, if it doesn't get the whole job done, it at least gives you a really solid starting point where you can now make another new layer uh, and go in with the clone stamp or the healing brush and just start to really kind of polish this up and get it looking spectacular. So I think that is going to do it this time, guys. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Toby and we'll see you next time.